Radiant off the board though, so Radiant not going to be able to get that one, and they were making so many plays with that on the hunt in the first game, and they're very good at making team comps around that particular champion and that ultimate especially, so really good to see it taken off the board. Kassin is going to be removed as well, so there's a bit of respect to Apaps potentially. I mean, Kassin also is such a strong champion as well, so no surprise at all to see it burned away. Not too sure again how much info Chiefs actually have here apart from Apaps' tweet, which unfortunately for them doesn't give them very much uh, no. uh, strategic information potentially. But uh, pretty interesting to see what's coming through, and the bans are actually continuing now. Yeah, really targeted bans coming down out of sudden fear. Ari being taken off the board as well. They do not want to see Swift as Ari, but honestly, Ari's just incredibly strong at the moment. So that could also just be a general ban. But Janna are going to be taken off the board as well, and sudden fear still having to think about their last option. Yeah, it'd be hilarious to me if they banned another champion Chiefs played in the last <laughs> game. But that's not the worst strategy here. That You know, they got to see a game, get to kind of watch the, the OPL unfold, get to warm up a little bit here. Yeah. And again, they've got a lot here as the team that's qualified. Again, I think as the last team through Challenger, they have a big challenge here against arguably the best team in the region. Yep, and Nah got through here, pastry time. And if... Swiper is one of those players that plays three champions extraordinarily well at any given moment. And Nah at the moment is one of those. I mean, Swiper is a player, I remember from a long time ago, I was like, Swiper, man, what's up with the champion? He was like, I just like to play the overpowered champions. That's what he <laughs> said to me. He just likes to play the good champions. And I can't blame man him. Man likes winning. He's always on top of the metagame. He knows his matchups and picks very well. And apart from Trindamir, I guess, he always has the top three in his pocket ready to oh, go. Oh, yeah, he certainly does. But... Speaking of top three, they have let through the Lissandra, which is being hovered here as well as the Jarvan. So really good picking coming through from Sudden Fear, making sure they can take away those really strong picks. But it's not going to be the Narvin combo. It's going to be that Lissandra and a flex pick as well. Yeah, potentially. I think I'd like to see Sudden Fear just play very clean in their draft. Mm -hmm. They, If they come in with a clear plan, that's the best thing to do against a team like Chiefs. Because, again, had a bit of a shaky qualifier stage. We'll see what they can get done here against such a strong team. We looked very together in their last game. Yeah, and these are going to be the lock-ins. So Lissandra and Jarvan, very, very strong picks. We'll see whether they can make them work out. But do you think as well that Sudden Fear probably has to focus on getting an early lead in this game just because of the Chiefs? Uh, heritage, the fact that they're so good at closing out these games if they get any sort of lead early on. Is it on Sudden Fear to make that move? I mean, I think it's a scary thing to do against a team that's well known for mid-game snowballing. Mm -hmm. They might just do whatever's comfortable for them, and if that's early game, sure, go for it. If that's like him, absolutely go for that. That was kind of how Chiefs started losing games last year, was yeah, well, that teams just play to their comfort zone instead of the Chiefs. And when you don't let the Chiefs do what they want to do, they play a lot worse as a team. It's hard for them to really get going once they don't get their momentum. So whether it's early game styming that growth or going late game and trying to pick them off, the only thing Sudden Fear really need is a cohesive plan. Yeah, but the answer has come in incredibly quickly here. Spooks and Swift are locking down that bottom lane potentially. Annie, of course, relatively flexible pick, but Graves Annie and... That just says aggression all over it. Yeah, I mean, even if it's Annie in the mid lane, which is, of course, the other option, I don't think we're going to be seeing the looper switch up in towards the top lane there <laughs> with that particular Annie. Out so well. Not so great, unfortunately, but absolutely screams aggression. The Annie initiation is massive, either from support or mid. Annie did see, I guess, some quality of life-esque changes her to, to yeah. her as well. So a little bit stronger, a little bit better, especially with that ultimate. Tib is himself now, not just as good damage, was actually a lot more flexible. Molten Shield especially being a much better skill. And we saw Talibaka's Graves in the last game. If you want to get aggressive and play a mid-game comp, that's the champion to do it with. Oh, most definitely. And that burst combination in that bottom lane, even in just the laning phase, you get a Tib is done on anyone, that Buckshot collateral damage combo finishes the rest of the job. So Really, really scary. The hovers are coming through. Only a couple of seconds remaining here for Sudden Fear. They're going to take in their bottom lane as well, and it's going to be Lucian Nami here. So Lucian, a champion that we've barely seen any of in the last patch here. Yeah. 5.2 from the t off the top of my head. I don't think he received any changes. Nice. He's just kind of the same sort of Lucian. Still a very strong champion, but kind of woefully short range. And that's maybe okay against Graves, but Graves kind of does what you want to do being a lane bully better. He just certainly pushes better than you do as well. Nami's a great champion, he's all very flexible, adds a lot to any team comp, but Lucian could be a bit awkward here, especially if that is any support in the bottom lane. Yeah, and there's the fact that Lucian, he does just feel a little bit like a worse Graves in this instance, but with the fact that you do have that uh, that double shot for his passive as well, plus Tidecaller's Blessing, they do have a fair bit of burst damage potential coming through. But we'll see whether it does work out because at the moment, yeah, it's throwing up some warning flags. Well, there's significantly more mobility than Graves. That's probably his biggest advantage yep. as a champion. So that might help out with a lot Whoa. of exchanges. And well, indeed. I haven't seen Swiffer on the Azir. And I'm incredibly excited to see how this 
you know, massive mid laner for Oceania plays on the Pigeon, man. Yeah, I mean, got MVP in his last game here. If he can do anything uh, anything like he did with his Ari in game one, it'll be a pretty spectacular to watch. Spook's going back to Lee Sin as well. Very much a comfort champion there for him. And Chief's pretty much have been given a comp that they would happily take if you gave it to them blind. Oh, most definitely. And Spook's locking in that Lee Sin again, as you mentioned. More than comfortable on that champion, plus there's so much playmaking potential there in the mid lane as well. What with the Emperor's Divide being able to move around your opponent so much, set it up for that kick if you need to. There is a lot of danger coming onto Sudden Fear, and they're taking a little while to pick out Apaps' champion here, and I really like this decision if they do go with it. Yo, we've seen a lot of this particular pick. We'll give Sudden Fear a little bit more time to figure it out. I mean, Swiffer here playing with a bit more scaling as well on his yep. side, so maybe they want to... Uh, Haul up some of the late game here because Graves is very much mid game, but there it is for sudden fear. It's yeah, Zareth. yeah, the Zerath being locked in. So having a massive range advantage in that lane could see him really be able to catapult this one forward. But you can never discount Swiffer. We have to look at Twitter <laughs> because of <laughs> course Apaps he thinks he's pretty confident and he's got a winning matchup. I theoretically, mean, if confidence is what he's going for, he absolutely does have a favorable matchup here, and he's counterpicked his own mid lane. So setting himself up well both with the tweet and then the early stages of this drop, but of course there's a lot more to League of Legends than just this oh, stage. Yeah. I do like what Sudden Fear has done here for the most part. Infamoon seems to just be on a comfort champion, which against the team as good as Chiefs is maybe a smart thing to do. The rest of the comp's actually quite good. They've got a lot of good engage. Xerus has surprisingly good control mage because he has a lot of latent CC. Of course known for his poke and his range, but it actually does quite well with both a slow and a stun, just dishing out AoE damage, weaving through a team fight. Super immobile if he gets jumped on. But other than that, if you can... Keep kiting around the fight. Get the picks where you want with this comp. It's hyper mobile and a lot of flexibility in the skirmishes. Yeah, it certainly is. And their wombo potential is also gigantic. What with that frozen tomb and cataclysm really setting up Apaps to get that right of the arcane in the right spot. Yeah. You didn't even do that one on purpose. That was amazing. <laughs> but the Chiefs here, as I said, I think if you could, if the enemy team had it in this team comp blind and got to counterpick every single lane, mm. I still think the Chiefs would take this team comp. It's so strong. Oh, and it synergizes yeah. with how they want to play so much. Not to mention the fact that this is the Chiefs, who are just incredible players in general, but they've also got all of these arguably incredibly strong picks at the moment. Of course, Lee Sin, the top echelon of jungler. I'm pretty sure Rek'Sai got through the entire pick ban phase, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, so hasn't really been seeing as much success as we saw in our first matchup, but... Rosie on Annie as well. I mean, this is something that we haven't mentioned just because everything else in this draft is so important, but Rosie is one of the most fantastic mage-based support players that I've ever seen play. And on an Annie as well, I mean, is there a more standard caster support than Annie? No, I mean, that is a Rosie champion through oh, and through. Yeah. Absolutely known for playing... Basically everything in support. I think I talked to uh, talked to them when they were around recently, kind of moving into the OPL, and they were like, Rosie wants to play Sir Twenty support. Should we let him? And I'm like, I don't know. It's your Ro team. Rosie actually <laughs> played a unique support champion in every single game that he played in Autumn. And that doesn't surprise me at all. It's ridiculous. A player that's known for, I guess, much like Egypt from Legacy, and that makes sense because they're rivals. Really incredible mechanics, lots of strong playmaking ability. And giving him an engaged champion like Annie, really beneficial oh, for yeah. a team like Chiefs. We saw what happened when Legacy decided to turn it up a little bit and really go for the mid game and get aggressive. Chiefs are going to have a very similar flavor to their team comp here. Yeah, and could you imagine that it's going to be involving getting a lot of forward vision, a lot of um, using spooks with the fact that he's going to be getting a, a sight stone fairly early. Are they going to be aggressively warding so they can catch junglers in transitions and things like this? Yeah, absolutely. And that's how Chiefs love to play in general. Oh, yeah. They love to get their deep vision in, make picks off. They've got decent champions to do a lot of that as well. And Spooks Lee Sin's not just one of his favorite champions because he's good at it. He likes the mechanics. He gets to do a lot of things that's very versatile, but it suits the Chiefs' playstyle so well. You already mentioned the sight stone. That's basically basically an auto build for Lee Sin. And that oh, yeah. doubles up, giving you a lot of mobility with the save card, but also is giving you vision. And Chiefs already want those two things anyway. They certainly do. And the one thing that does worry me just a little bit is the fact that Azir, relatively immobile as well, if you get on top of him, he can just fall apart incredibly quickly, especially if that ultimate isn't off, off cooldown. And Swiffer does have a habit sometimes of finding himself in places he doesn't necessarily want to be. So we'll see whether he's going to be playing a little bit more passively than he otherwise would and maybe not making those aggressive moves. Well, we saw that he was kind of allergic to the enemy structures in the last game against Legacy. Yeah. Diving past into the base of the walls, diving through turrets. He does like to be aggressive and he'll have to be a bit more passive. Azir lends a nice bit of disengage and a bit of zone control to this team comp that it wouldn't otherwise have. Because uh, other than that, Chiefs are basically just going forward all of the time with their team comp. Yeah, they certainly are. And with all these Sand Soldiers as well, I mean 
getting them forward. And if they manage to get these uh, NAR ultimates in the right spots, the amount of persistent damage coming through from three soldiers is stupid. Radio may as well just pack up and go home. Just, just a fun fact, I'm pretty sure you can NAR people into his, his, his ultimate. I want to so know whether it bounces fun. off. <laughs> Like, can you imagine that? Just, like, throwing them in and then they all just scatter and fly away? It'd be classic. It would be. I mean, we might find out. This Yeah, that's an educational (laughs) video game. That's a cute little interaction, though, potentially. And, again, I do like that they're not just going all in on the assassins. We could have had something like LeBlanc, I believe, was open there as well, which Swift does play. No, no, no. Last band for something. Oh, never mind. Don't want to play the assassins. I mean, (laughs) some of the assassins did get changed. Ari and LeBlanc obviously going to get banned out there by Swift as well. But did go for something a bit more control-based, and that does add a nice element to Chief's team comp as well. Yeah, and he didn't decide to go for the Zed pickup as well. I mean. This is something that Swiffer has picked up relatively recently. It wasn't sort of historically one of the Zed players when um, Zed was really big, but he has picked it up and has been playing a lot of it as well. And it was an option here if he really wanted to go hard in that mid lane. Yeah, you kind of alluded to it already, but he's very much traditionally a mage player. Yeah. Likes his Cinders, likes his you know, LeBlanc scenarios. He sees a lot of bads as a result as well. He's a very strong player. But he's going to take where he feels comfortable here. Azir, a very strong champion. Maybe underexplored by a lot of the competitive community. Yeah. Still a relatively new champion to League of Legends as well, but we'll see what they can get done here. There's a lot here for Chiefs to like. And Sudden Fear, their comp's good, but I don't know exactly what we want to do with it. The bottom lane especially is kind of a flag for me. Yeah, and is it sort of about picking people off so that AP Perhaps can get huge on this Zerath. Is it about sort of moving this Lissandra into the right spots and freezing people and making sure that they can get that 5v4 situation? I mean, it is all about the picks here for sure. We've got the long range Java initiation. Lissandra, very mobile, going either backwards or forwards, but unfortunately not both. So <laughs> you're going to have to make a decision there. And of course, Lucian, very mobile as well. There's no hard carry here for Sudden Fear. They can't really rely on late game. So they have to get ahead, stay even in the lanes, and then start rotating through the jungle and picking people off. And that is the Chiefs game. Yeah, and we'll see whether they can employ that specific strategy as we are onto the rift. Ladies and gentlemen, with the Chiefs taking on Sudden Fear. The Chiefs on our blue side, Sudden Fear on the red this time around. But you can see relatively calm and collected early movements from both of these teams. Defensive. Yeah, just again, going to set up that four-point defense here, other Chiefs. It was like both teams actually just going to put some wards in the river and try and cover some of that neutral gun, make sure the jungles don't get interrupted. Kind of curious to see what happens if we do break into standard lanes because everyone's got a reasonably strong lane matchup. I feel like Chiefs win the top and the bottom lane just generally, and the mid lane's probably a bit behind for Swiffer there, don't you? Yeah, do you think there might be some poke potential coming through from uh, this Sudden Fear bottom lane, though, considering the Nami having that ebb and flow, having a little bit more sustain? I mean, Nami, a little like Sona, who doesn't see nearly as much play anymore, unfortunately, does need to be very careful about getting hard engaged on. She has so many good tools for either being reactive or proactive, but they're a little bit more based in sort of a reactive camp. Nami's a really good peel support, a lot like yeah. Jana is. But it can't, the issue is, if you're the peel support and you get engaged on, you're not really peeling away from yourself most of the time. Not to mention the fact that you could potentially be dead before that stun even runs And out. then, of course, you can't peel for anyone. Yeah. Not even yourself, because no. you're very dead. So, <laughs> we'll see what happens. It seems like the jugglers will break out into some pretty standard patterns. Looks like uh, Krog's into red there for Spooks will be his start. And Java going to start near his rogue, which does give a pink Bomi some aggressive options if he wants them. Yeah, and we'll see whether a pink Bomi just does decide to start with that red first, which we have seen a little bit in other regions. But the Krugs look to be the standard start here for both of our junglers, as you mentioned. And the waves are going to crash there in the mid. And we'll see whether APAPs can, uh, you know, Stay true to his word. Well, it's one of those funny things where a pink Bomi might be paying a lot of attention to the mid lane. I think people for a long time talk about how Spooks and Swift have been playing together for ages, and they, for a while they were kind of glued together in the mid lane oh, here. Spooks yeah. was always there showing up in that mid lane to help Swift right. That's certainly changed a bit. The Chiefs definitely have a, maybe a much more balanced sense of play now, but uh, perhaps might just be going, like, you know what, I made that tweet. I'm going to win this lane. You better come gank for me, pink Bomi. And right now, he uh, has a life lead, so... Apaps, I, uh, I believe you. I mean, this matchup is, is certainly decent for Zerith. It's not a uh, hard count or anything like that, but it's favorable for sure. You both are basically trying to outrange each other, but Zerith just does it a little more consistently. His CC, especially in the early levels, is quite a bit better. Swiffer is going to get aggressive here, but when you're trading a couple of orders at the same range as one big burst of spells, it can be tricky, but Swiffer, nice little trade there in the mid. Yeah, manages to get that attack, auto attack combo. He dodges out of the way of an Arcano Pulse as well. Nicely played. Swiper about to turn into a big nah. As Pink Bomi actually discovers Spooks here. Aptly named as he gets a little bit spooked as he walks away from that one, but he's going to go straight back and finish off that camp. And 
Pink by me here, almost had an opportunity there. I mean, he could have gone in. I think he was afraid that uh, Swiper was already looking to come down as well. Lissandra can't really provide as much as Narcan in the early levels because Minina is just so obnoxious in the landing phase in the early status. Swiffer, they could be in trouble. Pink Boom is going in. He's been caught. There's the stun landing as well from Apex. The spike to come down, but there was no E. Swiffer just ease over the wall. Thank you very much. And Spooks is here as per usual. Yeah, Sonic Wave's going to land and... Apaf's got to be careful. Yeah, Spooks with the double buffs actually getting quite aggressive there, and Pink Bomi going to look for the level 2 game, which is maybe some of what we were expecting here, and unfortunately for that, the misfire is going to cost Javan his buff. He's getting to his blue buff quite late, and Spooks is already there. Yeah, Spooks actually hanging around, wanting to give him a bit of his own medicine here on this Javan, potentially. And Pink Bomi looks to be just hanging around, doing some wolves, but... You can see the rotation's coming through already from the Chiefs. Rosie well up here, taking away this blue buff. And that's a three buff start potentially here for the Chiefs. But Brawl is here. They might actually come back for this one. Yeah, they're going to look for it here. Spooks actually maybe wants to go back here. But a good reaction here from Sunfield will protect them. And for Moon's actually around the side as well. This could go very wrong for the Chiefs. It could. The slow is going to land. Safeguard not going to quite get into safety. A pink bomb, of course, does not have that Cataclysm available. But the teleport, Spooks is going to die. First blood for our pink bomb. And just such a good teleport coming down for Christmas trees as well. Just knowing that they wanted to defend the blue. Pink bomb could not afford to lose that buff. And Sudden Fear, it cost them a port, but they'll take it. They needed to defend that buff. Oh, they really did. This being said, I mean, Radia did get some free time in the bottom side of the map and he's going to be able to extend a lead, but only by four creeps. I mean, they didn't get too much out of that, did the Chiefs? I mean, well, it's interesting to see how much damage Swiper can get done in the top lane there after that teleport. That's the biggest loss as Christmas Tree is now starting to walk back to his top lane. Does have double Doran's ring, so going to get quite aggressive in that lane and got a, a good chunk of wards for himself as well to try and, you know, really fill things out and maybe bully Swiper. It's a very tricky lane to do so. But Swiper, he's just happy to, you know, they'll take it. Chiefs are going to look to use that teleport for something a bit bigger. Their first dragon's probably their really big point of contention. Yeah. And they've definitely got the timer on this teleport as well. So able to know exactly when to go for that teleport to the dragon without having a Lissandra, which is a huge, huge boon for the Chiefs just because that frozen tomb is massive in these team fights. It really is here. And you can see Swiffer kind of hanging out in the mid. Kind of curious to see what Christmas trees gets done at the next dragon. The teleport's actually going to be up I think by the time the first dragon would likely be contested, if Chiefs are really on point with their timings, they'll actually look to get in very aggressively and get in just under that teleport here, which would force Christmas Chiefs to walk down, which he's probably not going to be able to do if Swipe is able to pressure him well. Swiper did get a slight CS lead there from that as well, but that's actually very even. Lissandra and I are probably one of the closer lane matchups, given how strong both those laners are. Yeah, no, very, very true. And Christmas Trees is going to be heading down here. They clear out a pink ward. Spooks is aware that it's in there, though. You have to think that he's probably wanting to clear that one out relatively soon. But level three on these junglers. And Swiper has found Christmas trees. He does pop the E. Nice, cute little snare as he heads back. And it's sort of a, a funny a challenge. Swiper well, actually going to go back in there. Misses the blade, though. And we'll just get a little bit of damage with Hyper. So Swiper going to back off. Maintain control of his lane quite nicely. Look to keep bullying, but... Until the Sandra, uh, when sorry, when the Sandra hits six, this lane, this dynamic changes completely because now has kind of a semi all in with Megana. We can just bounce on top of you, now you into a wall potentially, and go in. In fact, maybe he's going to do it now. Yeah, he has actually managed to hit that level six Christmas tree. He's going to get thrown back into the other wall, but the E's there as well. The flash though from Swiper picks himself up the kill. Easy solo in the top lane and a solo kill. You said it. That's very rare in pro level play. So Swiper going to feel very happy there in the top lane. He's such a strong player. Arguably the best top laner in the region. He'll definitely be feeling confident after that solo kill. Yeah, and a pink Bomi actually has found himself in this bottom side. Looking to put some pressure onto the Chiefs as well as Rosie and Radio are heading back relatively scared. Oh, Rosie actually going to get caught by the Aqua Prison here as well. Um, and for Moon's actually going to be able to pick up that kill as well. But Swipe is in here from the back. Hits him with a boomerang. And we'll see whether he can get any follow-up kills. Radio is continuing to auto attack, but he's poisoning himself from that Gromp. And M for Moon, lots of creeps. He's going to be fine, but one for one. Yeah, and a decent teleport there for Swiper, but unfortunately in mini now form, all he can really be is kind of a crappy AD carry there in the bottom lane. He basically just came in to do enough damage to get the trade kill there, and Rosie could not juke that bubble. You saw him realizing he's yeah. already made a mistake, trying to waddle back, and it was far too late. Yeah, waddle is exactly the word when it's an Annie with no boots. Has picked some up now, so maybe not going to be waddling quite as much there on the bottom side of the map. 
But Radia, he's just more than happy to farm this one out. But M for Moon's doing fantastically keeping up. Yeah, and this lane is actually very competitive. They've not really been able to push this lane out as aggressively as I thought. So it seems like M for Moon's just doing a good job with his support, aggressively trimming the way through and staying up in CS. Radia is ahead, which is to be expected, but that's not the deficit we expect in Graves vs. Lucian. Oh, definitely not. And Brawler and M for Moon actually setting something up here, potentially. Radia, very low amount of... He's going to be backing in potentially the wrong place. Is... The Aqua Prison going to be available. They wait for the shot. There it is. The double tap going to be there as well. The Arden Blaze, but the flash after the flash, and Ember Moon gets the kill. And a rare misplay from Raider as well. Quick draw was presumably off cooldown there. He's a good enough player that he could react and get out of that bubble, but Brawler even walked forward just a bit forward to make sure he got a bit of range. And in fact, we're going to get Christmas trees in trouble. Yeah, Swiper actually almost has that evolution, and he actually baits out. The, um, the glacial path there from Christmas Trees as well, but he's going to get the transform, gets the flash off Christmas Trees as well, and the red buff seems to be the Chiefs now. Yeah, forcing the flash off, almost baiting Christmas Trees there with the wallop instead of the boulder toss, but Mother Slow must not have been back here. In fact, the red buff's getting contested now as well. Yeah, Swift has come around here as well, but there's the Nah, and Pink Bomi's just getting obliterated. Spooks picks up that kill. The red buff going to be going over to him as well, but right at the arcade, double kill already. Swiffer now in a very uncomfortable position. He's going to flash out. Glacial pass there, though, and Swiffer so low without the flash. Triple kill for Apaps, and I believe it. Yeah, he's making that tweet really kind of come to fruition now. Triple kill is going to be a massive uh, boost in gold. And it's actually 6 3 in kills for Sudden Fear. Perhaps being competitive with CS. Now ahead, again expected there in the Zerath Azir matchup. But that's a very good start for Sudden Fear. They might just pick up a dragon now as well. Yeah, they have an opportunity here, of course, with Swiffer only just coming up. Spooks is potentially going to be here. But if they take this quickly enough, then easy dragon for Sudden Fear. And Beautiful play so far. And as good as the rotation was from Super up towards the red buff there, being able to secure the kills, it was just a little too far forward there. And there's so much control that comes out of the Sudden Fear jungler and mid laner especially that there was basically nowhere for them to go. We're going to see it again here. Christmas Tree is getting aggressive, but Swiper goes in a really strong Naruto, but only gets a pink Bomi who gets slow, gets ult and back, but that actually might save him for long enough for perhaps to do all this poke damage. Every single ult perfect, a good bubble there as well, just to make sure that kill got secured. And Swiffer has nowhere to go. He's got no flash, he's juking the brush. A good stun Lancer as well, and that's an easy W for the triple. Yep, beautiful play from Apaps, and landing every one of those ultimates, even though they were relatively, um, you know, just let's do a little bit of damage with a, a small spell because everyone was already basically dead. But nice play coming through from Zareth, and man, after that level of smack talk, I would have thought that, you know, maybe uh, he was being sarcastic, but so far... Looking pretty good. Nice. Spooks has found his way into the top side, though. No flash on Christmas trees. He's going to follow the glacial path, but gets a rock thrown at his head. The crush to come through. Wallop to death. And Swiper, he barely even needed Spooks. And really strong play from Swiper. Again, flexing those muscles in the top lane. He's the laner that's ahead there for Chase, which is looking good for them moving in towards the mid game, towards what will now be the next dragon. Raider gets caught, though. Yeah, caught. caught, caught. In the um, E as well, so Brawler taking a fair bit of damage. But M for Moon, Rosie gets ignored, and you don't ignore Rosie because he's got so much damage. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, a kill going down onto Swiffer, but the double kill in bot. Yeah, and Tibbers with the Molten Shield active is quite speedy, able to run after Moon there. That was very good awareness there by Rosie, going back in and all inning the AD carry. You have to respect Annie's burst damage, even from the support role. You most certainly do, and they are going to from now on, most definitely, as Christmas Tree is going to come here, in here and try. Try and protect his inner turret. Swiper about to get a transform as well as Sudden Fear going to be able to take down the outer turret in the mid lane. Yeah, Pink Boom is getting really strong there. Azir with no flash, especially if he aggressively uses EQ for whatever is in. Christmas Tree is actually in trouble again. We'll get out from Swiper. He actually does have flash, but not going to go in yet. Doesn't quite there in bounce range. Christmas Tree is being a bit too aggressive here. Does have his ulti. Maybe he's trying to bait something. Potentially. The Nara is, of course, on cooldown for the next little while, but... Christmas Trees does have to be careful. Yeah, and I like this from Swiper as well. He's got no vision really at all in the river or in the, any early parts of the map, so doesn't want to overextend. Assumes that Christmas Trees is actually kind of mind-gaming him quite nicely yeah. there. He's, uh, has someone around, so he backs off, but he's got a massive lead here in the top lane. Got an early Hex Drinker already to help with the trades, and now has the Spectre's Cal plus the Ruby Crystal. Yeah, and with this double AP comp as well, you could imagine a very good idea as that Banshee's Veil is going to really help him out, especially when he wants to try and get those Nars in the right spots. Not going to get stunned out of it by Apaps. Is the Scuttlecrab going to go down in the river here as well? 
and the Chiefs looking to set up for a potential dragon, but I'm not even sure whether they had the timer on that one when it went down. And Nara is just such an important element of the combos one. I think you're right, they don't really have that time. A big Bomi getting stunned though. Yeah, he gets caught by Rosie. There's the kick. He gets smited, but Spooks, he's going to flash after him. Maybe a little bit of a slight damage miscalculation, but they get the kill. Yeah, really nice smite there from Spooks. It's so fun to see people getting smited here as well. Maybe a bit of a miscalc, as you said, but we should be okay. And as I wanted to mention with the top lane there, the fact that Swipe is getting bigger on the Nara is not just good for Chiefs, given how strong swipe a player Swiper is, but Nara is a champion that really needs to get in amongst the Sudden Fear players and just basically throw them to the wind in a team fight here. Sudden Fear team fight is all about control, mobility, and getting picks. And if Nara's in there disrupting you, that makes it so much harder. Although Ulti from Zera almost getting the oh, kill just wow. misses, though. That was so close on that Q, but Swipe is just going to waddle out happily. And 3-1-1 now for this Nas, still looking strong. The CS lead's closing a little bit, should close almost completely as Christian Trees has now got some free time in the top lane. But again, if this Nas gets big, it is so hard for Sudden Fear to get the Nas away from the team comp if he's able to tank all the AP damage. Oh, most definitely. APAP still trying to get some harass down onto Swiffer, but... He's a full health, full mana, pretty happy on this Pigeon. And staying competitive in CS as well. The gold is going to be pretty interesting between those two mid lane. It's actually a 1500 gold lead or so. Oh, there's Brawler's going, getting, never he's, mind. Yep, he's dead. He's yeah, very he's dead. most definitely dead. Spooks again, almost unnecessary here in this bottom side, but... Man, this, this Annie needs to be respected. Yeah, and this is the burst combo that we talked about, Atlas. There's so much upfront damage coming from collateral damage, buckshot, and Annie's spell combo as well, that if everything's able to land, Annie's stun sets it up so well. Graves, when he can quick draw in, get in close, basically melee range with his shotgun, does the maximum amount of damage. And you saw what happened to a squishy support like Nami oh, when yeah. he eats all the damage. Brawler basically just melted. It was terrifying to witness. So Mermaids didn't exist on the Rift for a little bit longer there, but... The Chiefs now trying to consolidate vision around this dragon. A minute until that one's going to be up again. And M for Moon, he's just being caught. Yeah, he gets stunned up there. Nothing you can do. Radio are actually going to be the recipient of yet another kill. So strong play for Chiefs towards the bottom side of the map. Swiper taking over the top. Sudden Fuel were ahead in goal by a few thousand, would you believe, maybe five, six minutes ago. And that's all turned on its head now. Yeah, and this is something that we actually mentioned just before Champion Select as well is whether it was important for Sudden Fear to get that early lead. And you said that it wasn't that necessary because of the Chiefs' mid-game rotations, and we're seeing it right now. I mean, Sudden Fear played a very competitive early game, and Paps is the big story here for his team. It's funny that he would, you know, be so confident on Twitter and make a call like that, but he's 4 0 one in this oh, game. Oh, yeah. A beating Swift from CS by a couple. He's not highest in the game, but second highest. Definitely, you know, kind of putting his money where his mouth is in this particular game, but he needs to do quite a lot of lifting, especially at this next Dragon fight. Yeah, Spooks going to get spotted here by Brawler as the blue buff does spawn. We'll see whether the Chiefs decide to contest this one. Doesn't look like it. It is only Annie and a pink Bomi, but they may tr have to trade this for a middle lane out of turret. I mean, they might not be too concerned. It's sudden for it looks like they're going to rotate back in, although a little too late there, unfortunately. Zerath wave clears very well, but if he's not there in time to wave clear, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Swiffer actually might get aggressive. Perhaps could be in trouble, man. For me, kind of cut off as well. Yeah, and if they cut off like this, it does make that Emperor's Divide very useful, but the Chiefs decide to play it a little bit safe, as Apaps does have a lot of poke potential. Yeah. Good to note as well that this would actually just be Chiefs' first dragon. It is good to shut your opponent out of dragons if possible, and in some ways snowball the objective, but Sudden Fear, they've got a good poke. They could actually maybe force Chiefs off, but Swift are very intelligently staying in the middle, basically just to scout and zone people away, and Chiefs are probably going to get away with this dragon for free. Oh, it has actually taken half health, but they've disengaged off this one. Sudden Fear are now around here as well. Lissandra's moved around. Swipe is here as well. Doesn't have lo a lot of rage, though, and that's going to be very important for this next fight because he has to build that one up. Of course, Megana is so important in these fights. And the Chiefs again putting pressure on this dragon, but now it's a 50-50 situation. We'll see whether Sudden Fear want to do anything. There's the Glacial Path to come in. They do manage to secure the dragon. It actually gets taken by M for Moon, of all people. But... Easy dragon pickup for Sudden Fear, and they deny the first dragon from Chiefs. They actually, yeah, de yeah, deny the first one and pick up the second for themselves. And crucially, Swiper could not get away in there. He was half health, chunked out there, uh, moving in from the top lane down. He did have his teleport, but didn't have time to go back home. And Chiefs maybe uh, started the dragon a little too early, actually, then really pay for it there. They're down in that objective now. They certainly are. And they do have a fantastic late game comp, so it's not too much of a worry for them, but. If this neutral objective snowball does continue, as Rider of the Arcane comes in just to take a blooper, no worries at all. Apap's easily going to be able to pick that one up and...
denying a blue buff from Azir, that is a big deal. Yeah, I mean, he actually picked up his own blue buff, unfortunately, so no sweet blind steal coming through. It seems oh, really? Like, yeah, he just, you know, he's like, I don't want to walk there. Oh, ah, fair enough. It's like Ping Boomer, can you bring in the blue buff? He's like, no. It's like, okay, I'll take it from here then. That's fine. <laughs> wanted, he wanted to deliver, it wasn't happening. So, you know, sent a courier to go pick it up and did manage to get it for himself. Ulti will be on a cooldown for a little longer, but it shouldn't be too bad there. Pink Boomer going to head back now. It's on Apex again. The, you know, the cocky player here is looking strong for his team. Now pick up his death cap. Yeah, exactly. So he's two items strong already before Swift has even started anything like a second item. So looking fantastic on the side of Sudden Fear. And... You know that when a Zerath gets this fed as well, he has so much AoE damage potential that he can almost rip through a whole team if they're lined up for it. And we talk about control as well on a champion like Azir, but Zerath, as I sort of mentioned in the draft, does have actually very similar properties, especially when he's ahead. And Zerath's damage has felt much more instantly. He's more poke and bursty based. Azir is much more of a sustained damage champion. Quite a bit better in the late game um, if you can position your soldiers correctly and actually do damage. Although the ulti and the knockup with the EQ does do reasonable damage as well. Perhaps yeah. though... The thing that's really good for Sun of he's going to be able to apply a lot of pressures. Perhaps could be in trouble, but everyone's saving him. Yeah, Empress Divide actually not going to work. He gets bounced over the top. Nice shot there from Spooks and a pink Bomi. He's going to die as well. What beautiful play. And someone has to be proactive. Spooks actually going to keep chasing. Yeah, there's, is the resonating strike going to come through? He does. He rockets over towards Emperor Moon, but Spooks, he then gets caught by that one. Swiffer coming through very aggressively. There's the frozen tomb. Swiffer pops his heel. He's going to die though. Emperor Moon picks up that kill. Christmas trees for the trap. And Ember Moon now needs to run away the hyper potential. Rosie with the flash, the sailing in Lee Sin secures that kill. And a really nice move there for Chiefs. Very aggressive, like you might expect, between Spooks and Rosie. Setting up kill after kill after kill. Swiffer even gets himself in there and goes and overextends to give his team more kills. So Chiefs knocking down some more turrets now as well. They might be denied on Dragons, but they're pretty much ahead everywhere else. They certainly are. And making sure that the Chiefs, especially, uh, get this level of structure lead means that they can open up this map with wards. But here's the replay. Yeah, so that was the sickest kick into the wall that I've ever seen here. There's Paps, he's getting bounced over and instantly killed Spooks with a great flash kick. Bomi gets stunned immediately by Rosie, and now the chase is on here for Chief. So they have trouble catching. Christmas Trees does a great snare there under Spooks, and even fades away for the E, maybe to bait them in. But Spooks rides all the way over. He's got a Q tagged on him, and here's Swiffer going so aggressive. Gets ulted there and almost dies. Rosie with a beautiful double stun for Tib as he does go down. And for Moon actually pokes over the top to get that kill. But now the chase is on here for Chiefs. They just go in. They've got plenty of follow-up. They don't even need more stuns. And Infamous just gets eaten by the rest of Chiefs. And that was such a beautiful max range Sonic Wave as well there by Spooks. Just tags him over the wall. Amazingly well played. And he just looks so comfortable on Lee Sin, you have to say. And comfortable is the right word here. He's so patient and so aware of how the mechanic works. He waited multiple times, hitting those long red skill shots, waiting for the gate closer to be used to continue to chase for his team. And that flash kick as well to set up Pink Bermi. As your ult ultimate aside, which was really awesome to watch, that was just a very executed engage by Spooks. Very decisive. And that's the type of things Chiefs need to do in this game. And honestly, leading on to the league as well. If they're going to continue to be the force that we expect them to be. Almost definitely, as they have... Rotated here to the bottom side. This inner turret is under fire as Rosie's just launching himself at M for Moon, who has to be quite careful as now that the minion waves come back, this inner turret definitely going to die. Only one inner turret left for Sudden Fear on the top side of the map. And you can see it's, it's only a couple of turrets to four now. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> Azir, of course, making things complicated. Yeah, I was the, very confused. With, I looked at the number, I'm like, hang on, guys. With the turrets. But uh, Rosie is actually going pretty next level with this Annie build. I don't know if you notice, he does have the standard sight zone plus uh, mobility boots with distortion. That's what I coined in the LPLs, the Makako Tabe special. He was kind of the original support Annie player. But uh, Rosie is taking it to another level here with a righteous glory for basically a talisman esque upgrade. In fact, he doesn't have any gold generating item, I just noticed. No, he actually sold that, I believe, to pick up the beginnings of that one. Apaps is dead as Spook's just flying in for all of these kills. Christmas Trees is now caught up. That is going to be locked down eventually. The double kill now for Spook. Six, two, and five on this Lee Sin. And he's got his carry pants on. Yeah, it's such smart play continuing for the Chiefs here as well. Looking just, again, so comfortable in these situations. It's so, it's so funny to me to just, again, watch them 
play so smoothly, but the thing that was key in that last pick as well, the, the ultimate damage the AoE from Graves can't really be understated. It's actually surprisingly long range, and they're able to get picks. As soon as Spooks either lands a Q for a kick, Swoof is able to get close for an ultimate or a knockup, and Rosie's in there with a stun from the mobility. Graves, pretty much everyone else has beautiful follow-up. Oh, most definitely, and they're playing it to a T as well. That's the main thing. And we'll see whether they can continue to do so, or whether Sudden Fear can find a way to pick themselves back up and get back into this game. Because we were talking about Apaps, he was 4-0 and 1, but now 4-2 and 1, he hasn't been able to do anything past about the 15-minute mark. Yeah, and the Chiefs, maybe looking to pick up their first Dragon here. Have to be a little bit careful. Sudden Fear, again, looking to contest. They have definitely been competitive around these objectives, and that's very much impressed me. Oh, it certainly has. And Swiffer trying to get down enough soldiers. A Pink Bomi not going to be able to steal this one out. The Tidal Wave to come through. And a Pink Bomi. Oh, Cataclysm's over the wall. Manages to secure the kill. Swiffer's going to go down here as well as Apaps trying to snipe people off from the back line. Spooks still alive here, of course, and has a lot of damage potential. But two for one going in favor of Sudden Fear. But Dragon importantly falls for the Chiefs. Yeah, and they finally get their first Dragon, which is so important. We mentioned that there's a lot of good burst damage coming through, and the scaling from Azir kind of ensures some of their late game here as well. So the fact they're able to get that really sweet 6% boost there in their damage is going to make all of the snowballing that they've kind of tried to do in the last 10 minutes or so that much more effective. And Christmas Tree is going to be back up here again very soon. Does have teleport available, so if any fights are going to be breaking out, Sudden Fear can gather the troops relatively quickly. Apaps trying to steal away this blue buff yet again. Does secure it. And the Scuttle Crab going to be under fire next. Is a huge top wave going to be crashing into that inner turret, and M for Moon is going to pick that one up. And we'll see whether the Chiefs are going to continue to play on the aggressive, but that was a really nice fight from Sudden Fear. It really wasn't. I think Sudden Fear, despite the good trades that they've taken and the moments of brilliance they've seen, they just don't feel quite as together as a team like the Chiefs. It's funny, actually. They're playing very similar styles of League of Legends. But they're just not quite... You know, Chiefs are obviously a lot more experienced when it comes to that sort of thing, right? They've played this sort of comp before, and the biggest thing for me, if you look down for vision, is that all of the pink wards for Sudden Fear are very defensive, and oh, Chief yeah. just have a bevy of vision wards in the right side jungle. And this looks like a, a step back here for um, the Chiefs as well. I mean, originally playing very, very aggressively, very confidently. We saw that slip off just a little bit as we did, did enter into... Um, uh, sort of the end of winter and, of course, finals as well after they suffered that loss against Legacy. But now we're seeing it sort of rise back up as their vision has been very extended as Radio actually dashing forward very aggressively. Pink Bomi, he's going to get caught out. Radio picks up that kill. This Oh, Christmas trees with a nice frozen tournament itself. But Swiffer just comes in from the backside. Double kill now. Spooks is going to lock down Apaps. He secures that one. M for Moon. All of your friends are dead, buddy. I'm sorry. And you're going to have to head back to bases. This inner turret's going to fall down as well. That's exactly what the Chiefs wanted here. They got the deep vision. They set up the picks. And what a brilliant ultimate by Swiffer to tie the room together on that fight. That gives them an amazing amount of space to be able to pressure just pretty much all of the structures here towards Sudden Fear. And Sudden Fear pretty much were forced to defend with the comp they wanted to get aggressive with. And Chiefs, with their aggressive comp, just made them pay. Yep, it was beautiful to see. And Tib is being popped just to tank out that tower as well. It's just going to hang out. Be a bear next to that dead inhibitor, but the Chiefs locking down the first inhibitor of the game. And you have to think that with this sort of mid game based comp, this is exactly where they want it to be at this stage. And if they had to let it go really, really late, it could have been a problem. And a, a key inhibitor for them to take as well. And they will be trying to close out this game very quickly. Late game, as you mentioned, not what they're interested in at all here. The Baron is available very readily now with that top inhibitor being the one to fall. So big advantages just across the board here for the Chiefs. And, you know, the items are decent here for Sudden Fear, but the gold leads just may be a bit too much now. Yeah, it's getting difficult, of course. 4-3-3 three, three now for Apaps. Unfortunately, unable to get himself anything from these fights. M for Moon... 4-3-1, and one. so doing decently on the not as favorable Lucian at this stage. But Christmas Trees is, has had just a horrible time on that top side. Yeah, I mean, he's now leading in CS, actually, which was not true of... Uh, it was actually a pretty... Sorry, quite even, although Swiper was certainly getting ahead in terms of solo kills. But Nars just a much higher impact champion than the Sandra is. And I said it, Nara's the super tank, especially in Mega Nar form, and he's even pretty tanky. So I didn't even go for another magic resist item. I think, you know, there is a locker for Spooks, which is good, and that will help prevent a lot of that damage, but they didn't need anything more than that. We're actually going for a Randuins now uh, to make Lucian's life even harder. And, you know, Infamous had a decent game. He's got his items coming through, but whenever Swiper gets in the middle of a team fight, everyone else follows from the Chiefs, and it's just Sudden Fear basically have no tools to disengage with.
Nami ult's just not enough. Yeah, Tidal Wave just hasn't really been working out for them because the Chiefs, as you mentioned, they have so much CC consistently as well. I mean, yeah, they've got Annie to start off these fights, but they can also use those Sand Soldiers to get the slows, to get the small knockups as well with that E. And it's just looking really, really scary here for Sudden Fear because... It's like they're circling the drain. Yeah, and one of the things I actually really like is we see Radio pushing down the bottom here. We saw this on Tallywacker's Graves in the last game as well. And Phantom Dance is going to, with the pickup here, and actually going for a Bloodthirst. And oh my god, they're going in. Oh, there's the Righteous Glory. I think that Apaps was on the map for a little bit there, but I don't remember. As a Pink Bomi, he's going to die as well. There's the Nah into the tower. M for Moon, you are so dead. As he just gets launched upon a triple kill now for Radia. And he really wants his title back as yeah. number one AD carry. And such creative play there from Swiper again. Really flexing muscles on this Nara all game long. Naring Infamous is caught out of position towards his turret, which is not really what you usually expect to be caught out of position. And this Graves as well. I think I understand why Graves is seeing a lot more play. He's very strong against Sivir especially. And just has a very aggressive, decent lane. But that new Phantom Nancer just makes him do so much damage, especially when he goes this build. Yeah, just ridiculous. As Swift is just going to turn into the Golden Boy for a little bit and finish off that Nexus and congratulations to the Chiefs in a dominating victory. And Spooks' lease in that game was incredible. I mean, I said it in the draft. This comp looks completely comfort for oh, all of yeah. Chiefs. And it looked like, I mean, don't give Swipe and uh, I mean, it has been changed a little bit, nerfed a bit on this patch, but that's not, you just still don't want to be doing it. In fact, we're going to get a replay here for the Chiefs as well. I was going to roll this one out. We'll see. Oh, this was, this was the jump shot. This is the jump shot. I mean, we talk a lot about, you know, Javan and dunking and Lee Sin and being very stylish. But this is an alley-oop, basically. It spooks. You can see Lance Q1 waits for the wave and then flash cues him right into the wall. No one else from uh, Sudden Fear can actually get in past the Azir wall. Pink Bomi goes in. Maybe a little bit miscommunication there with his team and gets blown up here. Another chase continues. Spooks waits again after the snare and the E is gone to chase through there. Does get bubbled up there and Swift and I was like, okay, I have to initiate now. Goes in, <laughs> gets altered there and the chase is just on it. A beautiful double stun secures it there. Infamy gets a good poke kill over the top to make sure he gets it. But Brawler and Infamy this just get one. chased down here. Oh, that Sonic Wave resonating strike just so beautiful. And the men, the Chiefs, that's the sort of play we expect for them when they play this comp. Get to vision, try and stab your opponent out of objectives. A rough start for sure. Sudden Fear had a really good showing for a team that came oh, yeah. in late to a qualifier. And perhaps he didn't quite, you know, live up to the, the tweet maybe or the... Uh, the, the <laughs> The arrogance of that tweet, potentially. But he definitely showed a lot of promise, and he was beating Swiffer in that lane for most of it, albeit with a lot of help from Pink Bomi, or some help. Yeah, and I definitely like the fact that, you know, he's willing to go up against these guys with no fear, because Swiffer has been one of the best mid laners in Oceania for an incredibly long time. But guys, of course, we have more League of Legends coming up just after this, and we will see you then.